Hello, I'm Danny Byrne, author of Elegant eBooks. Today we're going to take a look at creating eBooks and the ways we can use them to market ourselves and our businesses. I believe strongly that the way to succeed in business is to create customer loyalty. That means creating some sort of bond or relationship with your customers, and one of the best ways I've found to do that is to share something with them, something that you value and that they'll value. If you're in the business of selling a particular product, like exercise goods or antiques or beauty products, or particular services like time management, then you already share a common passion with your customers. So really share it. Write about it. Put your shared interests into words and pictures and then turn it into a simple ebook and give it away. When you hear about ebooks, you may think about the books you find at places like Microsoft or eReader or Powell's Books or any of the specialty shops like ebooks.com or FictionWise or even at Amazon with their Moby Pocket Reader. Or perhaps you're thinking of the kind of get-rich-quick trash you see online and on eBay that promises the world and delivers nothing, except a sense of being ripped off. I'm not talking about either of those. I'm talking about something that may be as short as three or four pages long, or as long as you want, as long as it has real information. Something that you'd want to take the time to read yourself something that you'd want to pass around to friends and colleagues, something that has a good idea or that describes clearly how to make or enjoy a product or a service or any other thing you might enjoy, something that's simply written well, and take that document and turn it into an ebook. The key here is to believe in what you're writing. This isn't some sort of cynical pitch that's supposed to sell snake oil to the yokels. People will recognize that immediately. What you want to produce is a book or pamphlet that you're proud of and that others will find useful. How do you make such a book? It's quite simple, really. Creating ebooks is simple and it's free. You already have all of the tools you need. You're all experts in your field. You already have a genuine love of what you do, or you wouldn't be doing it since you're self-employed. You have a desire to share your interest and your knowledge with others. And you have the best possible way to disseminate that information, the Internet. It's free, and your potential audience measures in the millions. The technical tools we'll talk about shortly, but they're the least important aspect of the process. And the good news is, even they can be free. There are three elements to an ebook: text, graphics, and pictures. That's it. Not every ebook needs or will even have all three, but all three together can make a wonderful ebook. Before we begin to make the book, let's consider the likely audience. Think about your goal in writing this ebook. What do you want to achieve? Is any one form better than another in reaching your audience and reaching your goal? Are your readers the sort of people who want to sit in front of their monitors reading? Are they likely to want to print off a copy of your ebook and read it somewhere else? Or are they people like me who want to carry it around on a PDA? Each of these audiences might have a different ebook designed for them. Today I'm going to concentrate on PDF ebooks designed for reading on a computer monitor. But all these other options are also important ways to share information. In fact, some may be better suited to your ebook than the layout we're going to look at in a minute. PDFs that are designed to be read on paper may be difficult to read on screen. They may require a lot of sc scrolling, or they may be jumpy as you move from page to page. PDFs that are designed to be read on screen may look empty on paper. Also, it's kind of awkward to hold paper sideways. Some readers may just stop reading if they don't like your layout. So try to keep your potential audience 
of readers in mind. That will help you determine the best format for your ebook. If people are likely to read it online, you want a book that fills the monitor screen one page at a time and is easily scrolled. We all know how to make something that'll fit on paper. You just accept all the defaults. Most computer word processors are just set up to print at 8.5 by 11. Handhelds are a specialized market. We're not going to talk about them today, but there are many websites like many Memoware and Many Books and the All Black Mask site that collectively have millions of visitors who read e-books on handhelds. If you have an e-book that's largely text, this is another option you might want to explore. However you format your ebook, please remember content is the key. Share your knowledge, share your passion. Compelling information is what will get your ebook passed from user to user. If you fill it with information, then people will want to read it and share it. And one of the things that will make them want to pass it around is that it's really fun to look at. Fill your ebook with good information and then make it pretty. Don't be afraid to add pictures and graphics. If it's a how-to book, add drawings and blueprints and diagrams. If it's a book about walking for exercise, add photos of the routes you take and the scenery and the people you meet on your walks. If humor will help get your point across, add cartoons. Although you do need to be careful with copyrighted material. Then post your book wherever you think you'll find an audience. And use a Creative Commons license so that your readers know right away that you not only allow but encourage them to email the book with to friends or offer it on their blog. Add a download link to your About Me page on eBay or on a custom page in your eBay store. Mention it in your eBay blog. You can even upload it to a site like eZine Articles. You want to share your ebook with as many people as possible. Get the word out and get those folks excited. So let's actually make an ebook. Now I'm going to just use random text and a few pictures I downloaded from Office Online's clip art collection. What we're going to examine isn't the actual writing in the book. We're just going to experiment now with ways to format. The ways that you can organize and present your words so that you'll, they'll have the greatest impact. So while this e-book might be bogus, keep in mind that the steps in the process we're going to use are genuine. This is really how simple it is to create a beautiful e-book that your customers will not only want to read, but will want to share. If your ebook is effective, you'll have one of the most highly motivated, enthusiastic sales forces imaginable, your customers, and they'll do all the marketing for you. This is Word 2007 that I'm using. The interface has been redesigned, and it might look unfamiliar or even intimidating. But everything I do in this new version of Word can just as easily be accomplished in previous versions or even in other products like OpenOffice and WordPerfect. So don't get hung up on which tabs or what interface, but keep in mind that all of these commands and all of these steps are available no matter what Word processor you're using. Let's begin by entering some random text into the ebook. The way to do that is the same in all versions of Word, although the text itself that's entered will vary depending on your version of Word. You use the equal sign, the letters R A N D for random, open parentheses, and then you indicate the number of paragraphs you want and the number of sentences per paragraph. Hit enter and you have a lot of random text. We're just going to keep this random for the moment because we don't really care what it says in this example. We're just looking at ways to make the ebook actually work as an ebook on screen. The next thing we want to do is go to page layout and change the size of the page. 
the typical page is eight and a half by 11. We're gonna change that so that it more closely mirrors a monitor's dimensions. So we'd want it to be eight inches wide by six inches high. And then we're gonna change it to landscape and I'm going to leave it with one inch margins. Now, as you can see, the page is wider than it is tall, and it'll look good on a computer monitor. Let's look at it in a print preview window so you get a clear picture of it. That will pretty much fill the average computer monitor with one page of text. So here's the text for our ebook, which we've worked hard on perfecting. Now what we want to do is go ahead and make it look really nice. So let's begin by adding an opening page to our ebook. I'm going to insert a page break. Put a blank page up top. I did that with a keyboard shortcut of, of Control and, and Enter. Uh, you can also do it on the Insert tab here with Page Breaks. Next thing I'm going to do is insert a picture. I'm going to get our picture by going to Microsoft Office Online and looking in their clip art collection. We're going to look for furniture because we're going to say that this ebook is just about making your own furniture. So let's choose these rockers. These Adirondack chairs. and this cabinet. Now we've taken three clip art items, so then we go up to download three items. They're actually photos, not clip art. And say download now. And when you get to this point, you open it. You don't save it. And they'll be added to your clip art collection. And they're downloaded and added to your clip art collection. Here are the pictures we downloaded. I'm going to copy this one and just insert it on this first page. Now I want to put the title of my ebook over here to the left, and you can see where my cursor is. That's not at all what I want. So let's go to text wrapping and make this. as you can see, square, and we've positioned it to the left. Now we'll be able to add text in a more freeform manner. I want to put the name of the ebook to the right of the picture. So I'm just going to call this Making Your Own Furniture. And of course, that's a pretty darn small title, so let's format that a bit. I'm going to pick another font. And as you can see in, in Word 2007, you have this font preview. And as you go over the font, you can see how it, you get an instant preview over here of what the font will look like. I'm going to choose this one. And I'm going to make it quite a bit larger. I don't really like the sizing here, so I'm going to make this just a tiny bit larger. I highlight my letters and then come up to the toolbar and highlight the font size. If I type in a new font, I can make it just the tiniest bit larger and make it look what I think is a little more in line with the 
picture as I see it. So I want more space between the text and the picture. So I'm going to come back to the format and work a little more on more layout options. We've got it under square, but we don't have very much space to the left or the right. I want some more space between the edge of the picture and the title. So I'm going to come over to text wrapping and change the right hand wrap distance from text from 0.13 to 0.25. I think that looks a little better. Now I want a little more space on top as well. So I'm going to come up and format my paragraph. Well, here the space before is at 0 and after is at 10. I'm going to make the space after 0 because I don't think that much matters. I think we could use more space before, so I'm going to make it 35. And that makes this a little more centered. Now, you've got a fair amount of space between lines here. So I'm going to come back to paragraph spacing and change this from multiple 1.5 to just single. And that should give us the front page. Now that we've inserted a front page, let's turn our attention to the text itself. The first thing we want to consider is the actual font that will be shown when the ebook is read on screen. When you print a book out, it's usually in a serif font, which means it has those little lines at the tops and bottoms of letters. On screen, it's actually usually better to use a sans serif font because monitor resolution is usually not great enough to really give a good look at the little serifs and the delicate ascenders and descenders of some serif fonts. So this book is currently in Calibri 11. That's not a bad font but it's still a little bit delicate if you have a low resolution monitor. So let's choose our text. I'm not using the select all feature because I don't want to change the text that we set up on the front page. Um, so I'm just going to scroll through and select it by hand. And let's choose it to Verdana, which is a slightly less delicate sans serif font. It's a little bit easier to read on screen. Let's turn our attention to the first letter of our ebook and add a dropped cap. We'll go to the Insert tab, choose Drop Caps, and from the menu I'm going to choose Dropped. Now let's go back to Home and change this font from the same one as the rest of the text to a slightly dressier one. I'm going to pick Garamond, which is a nice looking typeface. And I'm going to change the size from 52 to 61, just to make it a little bit bigger. Then what we want to do, change our first line to small caps. We'll select the line, come up to font, and choose small caps. Notice that the I in insert is larger than everything else on this line because it was initially capitalized. If we change it to a small letter, that gives our small caps line a uniform look, which I think is better. Now, you may or may not want to use justification for your text. If you do, what you want to do is go into your options menu. Let's pull this over so you get a better look at it. Come to Advanced, scroll all the way to the bottom of Advanced, and change your layout options. 
click on here and go to do full justification the way WordPerfect 6x for Windows does. Put a check mark in that box. Say OK. And when we justify the text, what's going to happen is that instead of just adding space at the end of a word, WordPerfect for 6 for Windows justified the entire sentence or line so that it could put spaces in front and behind and it could make your your paragraphs just look a lot smoother. You wouldn't have those rivers of white space that you sometimes see in Microsoft justification. Again, to avoid messing up the front page, I'm going to just select the text since there's not that much of it and then add the justification. A lot of people don't bother justifying online text, and if you'd rather not, that's just fine. I just want you to see all of the possible ways you can do these things. So here our text is justified, and you don't really see that sc scrolling river of white space that you sometimes see, so I think we'll just leave it right now. We've got some extra white space on this first line. So let's try adding a hyphen here in coordinate and bringing just a few more letters up top to see how they work. And let's make that small caps by using the Format Painter. This takes out some of the excess spacing and looks a little cleaner. Now let's turn our attention to paragraph spacing. If we select all the text because we want this throughout the paragraph, the spacing throughout the document, and come to the paragraph diagram. You'll see that we have 0 before, 10 after, and multiples at 1.5. This looks relatively good for online spacing. Because we're using 12-point fonts and using only 10 points after a line, after our paragraphs, it's not going to look like we're swimming in white space, and yet it'll give us some breathing room between paragraphs. The line spacing at 1.5 multiples also opens up the text a bit for online reading, yet not so much that it's hard to follow from line to line. In most Word documents, you'll find the spacing is set with zero and zero and single space. I would suggest you try changing it to these parameters instead. Now that we have the basic format for our text and the way we want our ebook to look, let's look at inserting graphics. Now, we downloaded three pictures from the internet for this book. If I were actually writing a book about making furniture, chances are I wouldn't be downloading these pictures from the internet. I would have pictures of my own that I had taken, or I'd be using diagrams or drawings or blueprints that I'd scanned. Um, you want your images to complement your text, and if you're selling your own products, the best thing to use is pictures of those products. But for this demonstration, since I'm not a furniture maker, we'll just continue with these downloaded pictures. So here's our text at this point. It's just blocks of words. Let's add a picture for the second page. So I'd go to Insert Picture, and we downloaded these rockers. And they're sized to take up this full page, which is fine. That's something we might actually want to do. But what if we actually had another picture we wanted to use and we didn't want to take up the whole page? Let's add the Adirondack chairs. Now, they're added in a form called inline with text. And so you can see there's a, a big space, big empty space to the right of the picture and then the text begins here. That's not really what we want. So in Word 2007, I would use this position to, to ch quickly change that. But let's look at it in the traditional text wrapping format. What I would do is go to Square 
and that brings the text around the picture. Now I'm going to resize this picture a bit by clicking and dragging. And because it's square, we can continue to move it. Now that we've resized it, let's go back to the More Layouts options and change the way the text wraps around it. I want more space between the picture and the text on the right. So I take the right hand margin and I'm going to change it to 0.3. I also want a little space on the bottom. By default here it has 0 and I'm going to change that to 0.15. When we say OK you see that the text is now set off from the picture in a much more pleasing manner. And that's all we need to do to add pictures to our documents and to make them behave in the way that we want them to behave. So this is our basic ebook. It's six pages long. It's formatted to lay out on the screen the way we want. And because we're using Word 2007, turning it into a PDF file is a snap. We just go to File, Save As, choose PDF, And we'll call it Making Your Own Furniture and save it. As simple as that, here's our ebook. Now, if you're not using Word 2007, you may want to find another way to print your PDF. One good way to do it is with a free PDF printer called. Primo PDF. If we click on OK, the Primo dialog comes up and you have several choices of how you expect your book to be used. For this demonstration, let's just say it's going to be viewed on screen. You choose a location to save your book and we'll once again just call it Making Your Own Furniture. Click Save and if your file exists, as it does in this case, you'll be warned before overwriting it. I'm going to say yes, and then you just click OK. Now we're going to run into a problem here, which you'll see when it's opened. Although the book looks good, it's not in the correct dimensions. There's a large amount of white space here on the side, which is not what we want. We're trying to make this book fill the computer monitor, and this white space is exactly the kind of thing that we don't want to see. So let's close Acrobat and go back and try printing one more time. We'll print, and this time, if you look down here where you have the choice of scaling, it says no scaling. We want to scale it to a letter size page. We say OK. Take these same choices. And print it. And this time it fits the page correctly. That's all you need to do to take a simple block of text, dress it up, and make a really attractive ebook. Mm -hmm.